Welcome to Adalta. My name's Tim Oldham. I'm the Managing Director and CEO. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to our company today. Adalta is an Australian listed clinical stage drug discovery and development company. As such, many of my remarks today are subject to the usual disclaimers. Adalta's purpose is to use a unique iBody technology to create multiple novel therapeutics for debilitating diseases that have proven difficult to drug with traditional antibodies. We create value for our investors by adding additional assets to our pipeline and progressing those through various stages of development. And we create value for our biopharmaceutical partners by adding quality new products to their pipeline or helping them through co-development arrangements to address their most challenging drug targeting problems. Why do we need a new drug discovery platform? Despite the success of small molecules and more recently of antibody therapeutics, there are still many diseases that are underserved today, primarily because of challenges in addressing the fundamental drug targets underlying disease. A good example is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is the target of adults' first and lead asset. This is a $3 billion market for a degenerative and fatal disease Despite the uh, large sales volume today, it is in dire need of improved treatment options. With patients suffering uh, <clears throat> progressive reductions in lung function and immediate survival after diagnosis of less than four years, the existing marketed drugs, although generating three billion in, in sales a year, come with significant side effects and merely slow the rate of progression. Uh, they do not appear to significantly extend life and they certainly do not halt disease. Unfortunately, the burden of uh, fibrotic lung disease is likely to increase as a result of COVID infection, um, and long COVID is becoming a uh, more significant issue by the day, suggesting the potential for further need for better antifibrotic drugs. So who is a daughter and what do we have today? Our underlying assets today are essentially our iBody platform that enables us to create multiple therapeutics for billion dollar markets, specifically focused on markets that are underserved by traditional antibodies. Our lead asset is called AD214. Uh, it is targeted at fibrotic diseases in general, uh, but initially at the $3 billion IPF market. It has completed phase one single dose studies where it was very well tolerated and has now moved on to multi-dose healthy volunteer studies. Our second asset, it's an iBody against an enzyme called Granzyme B, which is being developed in collaboration with GE Healthcare for the PET imaging market to help us identify early responders to immunotherapies. This is a revenue generating collaboration for us and is targeting the $6.4 billion PET imaging market. In the near term, we are well on the way to significant expansion of the company. We have a clear vision for growth aiming to have 10 products in our pipeline by 2023, up from the two today. In relation to AD214, we have some near-term catalysts to grow and de-risk this asset with further phase one data this year and additional preclinical data supporting further indications in other fibrotic diseases. We expect a first partnering window to open for this asset in the second half of 2021. For our other assets, we obviously aim to progress the Granzyme B asset, which has now moved from discovery and lead optimization into preclinical development. We're expecting to add a second co-development collaboration imminently and an additional two programs to our pipeline in the remainder of this year. So what are iBodies and what's the iBody advantage? iBodies are a family of single domain antibodies derived from the shark immune system. In our case, we have fully humanized these, building uh, the iBodies from iBody library from a, a fully human scaffold protein. Uh, and the benefit of iBodies being about 10% of the size of the traditional antibodies is they confer traditional antibody specificity and selectivity uh, with the ability to access uh, deeper and more challenging binding pockets and binding regions. And this is a function of the uh, complementary complementarity determining regions being much longer and more flexible than in a traditional antibody. In addition, they're available in a number of flexible modular formats. Uh, they can be direct therapeutics, either as a naked eye body or with a number of half-life extension 
uh, strategies. We use an FC fusion version for AD214, for example. We can also envisage bispecifics, and we can also use eye bodies as a targeting agent for other therapeutic or diagnostic payloads, as for example, with the uh, Granzyme B PET imaging agent we're developing in collaboration with GE. Turning now to AD214, this is a first in class treatment for a range of fibrotic diseases with the initial focus on the $3 billion IPF market. We're targeting the GPCR receptor CXCR4, which is now known to be a critical player in the development of fibrosis in many organs. And its upregulation in fibrotic tissue is highlighted by the brown staining in the top right image. We have demonstrated in the mouse model of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, that we can halt or slow the progression of fibrosis as is demonstrated by the bottom panel. Here, the blue staining marks collagen, a uh, marker of fibrosis. And you can see that on the left is a normal mouse. In the middle is a mouse um, after 21 days after administration of bleomycin. And on the right um, is, is the same uh, study, but where the mouse has been treated with AD214 uh, from day eight. Uh, summarizing that study, uh, you can see that at multiple dose levels, we were able to achieve statistically significant reductions in the level of fibrosis compared with bleomycin alone. We've now moved on to a phase one clinical, human clinical trial of AD214. Uh, this is in healthy volunteers where single doses have been extremely well tolerated. We've demonstrated that AD214 engages the CXCR4 receptor, and we've been able to demonstrate sustained and high levels of receptor occupancy for extended periods of time. And this supports both safety of the molecule as a whole and the platform as a whole, as well as providing support for a longer dosing interval than perhaps might have otherwise been predicted. This slide highlights the receptor occupancy. This is measuring uh, the number of CXCR4 receptors on circulating T cells in healthy volunteers uh, that have been blocked by CXCR4. And you can see a C clear a dose dependent increase in both the level of receptor occupancy and the duration of receptor saturation. Um, in this study, we initially planned to follow volunteers for one week. Um, after the 10 milligram per kilogram dose, it became clear that we were getting better than expected receptor occupancy. And as you can see at 20 milligrams per kilogram, we maintained greater than 60% receptor occupancy for, for more than three weeks. And this supports very uh, much longer uh, duration and dosing intervals than perhaps would have been anticipated from the PK profile of the product. Turning now to our second field of endeavor, which is the field of immuno-oncology. Um, and here we're working in the uh, immuno-oncology and PET imaging market. Uh, immuno-oncology drugs uh, are predicted to generate 95 billion in sales by 2027. Unfortunately, only 20 to 40% of patients respond to these drugs, um, despite the fact that they are reactivating the patient's own immune system. It would therefore be extremely valuable if we could identify which of those patients are responding to the drugs and indeed which drugs are successful in activating the patient's immune system. And therefore a PET imaging agent capable of identifying a biomarker of the immune system's activation would be extremely valuable. GE Healthcare had identified that Granzyme B would indeed be such a marker uh, and has come to us to work with them to develop a PET imaging agent against Granzyme B. Such an agent would substantially reduce the uh, costs of immunotherapies, get patients onto immunotherapies, the right immunotherapy faster, uh, and provide a, sh a, a much faster development timeline for new immuno-oncology agents. The market for PET imaging agents is projected to reach 6.4 billion by 2026, with the largest products generating in excess of $400 million a year. Um, and these agents get to market much faster than a traditional therapeutic. So the status of our collaboration so far, um, GE have funded the discovery work at Adalta and have now elected a panel of iBodies to progress into preclinical and clinical development. Uh, <clears throat> we announced that that uh, progress would uh, take place earlier this week. Um, and uh, we have now extended also our collaboration with GE to support manufacturing uh, and some of the preclinical in vitro assays that they require. And this will generate additional research fees uh, on top of the over $1 million we've earned already. 
We will, of course, earn additional milestones and royalties on the achievement of development and commercialization success. This essentially is a pipeline asset uh, in our uh, portfolio at no financial cost to Adalta. So looking at those two assets, you can really see how our business model comes to life. Our platform creates the capability to create multiple assets. We're developing a pipeline of internal assets such as AD214 uh, that we developed through phase one or phase two before licensing to big pharmaceutical companies. And we anticipate adding two more targets to that internal pipeline in 2021. Our external pipeline is developed in collaboration with third parties uh, who are bringing with us complementary technology or target insight. And this is a, an example uh, of our GE collaboration. And we're on track to add a second collaboration by the middle of 2021. So by the end of 2021, we'll have moved from a two product pipeline to a five product pipeline. This will start to put us well on the trajectory to um, our, I guess our, our, our vision and poster child, which is uh, Ablinks, the first single domain antibody company. Um, and you can see that their development through multiple uh, products into the clinic, multiple partnerships, generated continuing revenue, continuing growth, and ultimately led to a significant acquisition by Sanofi uh, 10 years after they achieved the first product into the clinic. Ablinks' strategy at the time of the first product into the clinic and their IPO in 2007 was almost identical to Adalta's although we think we have a more efficient way of expanding the IP and our underlying platform. The milestones for the remainder of 2021 um, are significant both for AD214 and for our other assets. Uh, and they really focus on the completion of the multi-dose program in AD214 in healthy volunteers, the commencement of a phase 1B protocol, which will be studied in IPF patients using a PET imaging version of AD214 that will enable us to visualize AD214 in the lungs of IPF patients, um, confirming the mode of action and the ability to access the upregulated CXCR4 and fibrotic tissue. Um, in terms of the other assets, uh, adding a second collaboration agreement, commencing the development of two new iBody enabled pipeline assets, and further progressing our GE uh, program are the keys ahead of us for the remainder of this year. Um, our team is broadly experienced in all assets of drug development. Uh, on our board, just highlighting a few examples, Robert Peach has developed a GPCR platform company in Receptos in the past, exiting for $7 billion. Um, our Chief Operating Officer, Dallas Hartman, is a very experienced protein uh, chemist and engineer, honing his skills at CSL and NextFET. And our Scientific Advisory Board are deeply experienced um, in pulmonary research in particular, supporting our AD214 development. Our company has a market capitalization of 30 to 40 million Australian dollars. We've cashed through the end of 2021. We really do think we are an exciting uh, and valuable investment opportunity right now. To summarize why, uh, we are a platform company with, the, with the, uh, a validated iBody technology capable of creating multiple assets against difficult drug targets. The lead asset has multiple indication potential uh, with an initial focus on the debilitating uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a $3 billion market. Our second asset is being developed in collaboration with multinational company GE Healthcare uh, to solve the challenge of identifying immuno-oncology drug responders uh, and participating in a market worth $6.4 billion. We have a very clear vision for how we will expand the pipeline. We have leading expertise to deliver on that expansion and we have several near-term growth catalysts over the next uh, six to nine months uh, that will demonstrate, continue to demonstrate our ability to execute on our promises. Thank you for your attention today. We look forward to discussions both with biopharmaceutical companies uh, interested in deploying eye bodies against challenging targets, uh, interested in adding uh, fibrosis assets to their therapeutic pipelines, and also to new investors interested in joining us on a very exciting expansion journey that we have in the months and years ahead. Thank you for your time.